So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you all know, after a long, long time, one of my main men, Ernst Wilhelm, is here, and he's going to be talking about one of the, my most favorite subject, and it's actually something I've been looking into, and then I actually came across one of his own videos, and I'm like, that, that's just amazing information, and then I, I wanted everybody else to kind of learn from him, so, and I wanted to learn at the same time, so I made sure that he came here today to talk to us about omens, especially during an astrological reading which can sometimes be even used without astrology as well. But I really wanted to know what certain things mean, like when a dog barks during a reading, when a phone call comes, when you hear a bird. So Ernst, please uh, show us your insights and experience of omens during astrological okay. events. Sure. Omens is really what we do as an astrology. Even when we look at the chart, we're just looking at the omens of the planets, really. Yeah. So omens is basically just paying attention to our environment and realizing that's what's happening in our environment is reflective of our life. And there's, I mean, there's just so many great ways to use omen. And I think that they're, the, what I love about them is when they come, you pay attention because you're, you're working with the horoscope and it's, you're in a state where you're sort of confused with what's going on here. Right. You know, that you always hit that at a reading. Yes. Um, and I find that when an omen comes that you see, it's like, you know, it's like you definitely need to tell the person this. It's like clear, it's like a clear message. And sometimes we need that during a reading. But where we really need that is in our own lives. Because, you know, if you cast a prajna for your own life, you know, you never can really trust it. Right. 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 Or if you cast cards or get some tarot cards and you ask for your own life and you're in your room alone. You have to, you know, it's just random. It doesn't really work that way. Right. But if you observe your own environment, the omens are always coming. They're just always there. And so if you watch those and pay attention, as your life unfolds, you already have a feel for it and you can make predictions. So where I actually enjoy using the most is just in observing my life or if somebody tells me something that happened to them because it's a, a clear thing. Um, you know, in the old books, they have a lot of omens so anyone who wants to learn omens can look through any of the old astrology books there's often a chapter in there i'll mention some of those later but they're a little cryptic like for instance there's um there are things like if somebody asks you if this is a virtuous girl like in marriage chapters of prajna books they're asked this or something if somebody asks if this is a virtuous girl if you see someone digging with a stick or sawing with the saw the answer is no okay, okay. all right well People don't really ask that anymore. But I remember one time I was doing a reading and so a girl came in talking about how she loved this guy. She had his horoscope and how she just was the only guy for her. And right then, someone on construction on the road fires up a jackhammer, right? <laughs> you know? I'm like, okay, does that mean she's a heart, a slut? No. Yeah. What it means is, no, this isn't going to be the only guy you love, right? So I knew right away there had to be something seriously wrong with their compatibility, most likely. So I looked at their compatibility, and, and I just kept that as a mental note that, okay, you, um, this is not true. You're really loving this person. think you're going to love him forever. It's not true. Let's figure out why. But I knew it wasn't true already. And looking at the compatibility, they had something called Raju, which ironically is something that gives the biggest ups and downs in relationships, like a jackhammer. <laughs> what is it called? The, the Raju dosha. Oh, Raju dosha. Okay, okay. Ah, yeah, which gives those huge ups and downs. And during those downs is often when indiscretions happen in relationships. So, um, you know, so you just watch the environment. And it's really a logical thing to do omens. And if people read some of these books and grasp the concept, the ideas, and then start applying them to um, just in a logical way. And... I've never spent all this time memorizing, okay, this equals this and this equals this. Like they have all these lists of the things that things mean. I've never spent time doing that. I've just read them and understood, okay, there's a pattern here and logically interpret the pattern as it happens because you're never going to get the exact omens in that form. You know, you don't always get those exact things. So you have to be, you know, it's really logic. It's sheer logic, applying logic to the environment to read the situation. So I want to go through a few different types of omens. Okay. Okay. 
One thing that's my favorite, I'd say my favorite omens are animal omens. Yes. Yeah. So let me tell, I mean, um, like when I give a reading, either one of my dogs will interrupt by drinking the water and you can hear it or they'll just start barking because they heard something outside the window. And I'm always like thinking, why, what does that mean? What is that? Yeah. Yeah, please do okay. tell us about this. Yeah, so what I, why I like animals is because they're noticeable. They really get our attention. They either make noise or they move. And yes. so they stick out, right? Yeah. There's a lot of other omens happening, but they can be so blended into the environment we could miss them, you know? Yeah. So, you know, dogs represent loyalty, of course, you know, and friendship, like real friendship. So depending what the dog's doing would reflect that. So if, if somebody asks you, well, he loved me, and all of a sudden you hear your dog drinking water, well, water is emotions. So you can say, yeah, he'll be emotionally very loyal to you. You know, so it depends on the context. But dogs, you want to keep the basic idea, it's loyalty. Now, on the other hand, you hear your dog growling. Yeah. She says, is he going to love me forever? And you hear your dog growling. Well, that's a negative omen. Or if you hear somebody beat a dog and the dog, you know, that's a negative omen. Yeah. That means loyalty, friendship is being broken. Yeah. So at that point, you'd say, well, this person's really going to make you frustrated you'll want to bite his head off and growl at him because he's not going to be loyal on some level. So it's about learning the basic keyword of the animal and then applying it based on what's actually happening. Okay. Now let's say if like you were just talking about the growling and drinking water, what if a person doesn't have anybody, but they're saying, will I find someone in my life? And then the growling or the drinking water and these. Yeah. Things. So let's say someone asked, well, I find someone, you hear a dog growling, or you hear a dog getting beaten, you know? Right. Or you hear somebody cussing at a dog, you know? You hear a dog get ran over in the road, you know, something really horrible. Yeah. And right away, you know, the person asking the question has, has doesn't have a really high capacity for loyalty and friendship. So they're going to screw all their relationships up. Okay. And so at that point, you need to look at their chart and say, okay, where are the signs of lack of loyalty, lack of any real unselfish friendship? that's getting in the way of their relationships is because they're not a healthy dog that they can't. Now, on the other hand, you get a good dog omen, you know, like the dog is on um, lapping water or something. Um, or you're here on the street, somebody goes, oh, what's a nice puppy? Cause someone's yeah. walking their dog and someone sees it. Well, that's a nice dog. To that you'd say, yes, you know, you've got some really good qualities of loyalty and friendship and those will pay off. And one day you'll have a good relationship. Now, when this omen happens, does this mean that we are talking about the person getting the reading or would they may actually attract people who have anger because the dog is growling? They will attract I always them. would apply it to them. To them. Because, okay. Yeah, see, everything in life is a two-way street. Right. You don't attract an angry person unless you've got some unresolved anger issues, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. See. So I really like animal omens. Now, there's a great book. It's called Medicine Cards. You can get this on Amazon. Um, it comes with a deck of cards. It's by um, Jamie Sams and David Carson. This book has a whole list of like 100 animals or something. I don't know if it's that many, but it has a lot of animals with one or two pages to each animal plus the keyword. So I really like getting the omens out of that book um, and then watch the animals come to you. For instance, one time I had a person show up for a reading and they walked over to my house from their house. They lived in the neighborhood and um, they just, first thing they said when I sat down, I said, wow, I just saw a dead possum, right? When I was coming over here. And I said, that's interesting. And I said, did you ever see a possum before? And she was like, no, that's my first one. So she was like, wow, my first possum ever. It was more significant she'd never seen one because I would see possums on this neighborhood occasionally because there was a lot of them they get ran over. But this was her first time, right? And she'd been living in that neighborhood probably at least six months, maybe a year. So I knew it had to be significant. So possums, what they do is they pretend. They're very pretentious. They play possum, which means you pretend you're dead so the, animal, yeah. other, the big animal doesn't eat you. You know, the, the animal that likes to eat live prey doesn't eat yeah. the possum. So it's about pretending something then is the truth. It's a very pretentious animal. So then after that, she started talking about she loves this guy and he's just right for her and he's so perfect. And well, I checked their compatibility and well, he this, well, he this. And I'm like, that's really interesting because you just told me you saw a dead possum. So right away I knew she's pretending that she really loved this guy. Oh. Then she told me about this other person she recently met who she's not interested in. That yeah, he has great qualities. And so what was happening was 
she actually was pretending to be in love with one guy who wasn't a very good guy, you know, had not a great person, way too old for her, da da da. Because this other guy, she didn't have the self worth to feel like he could want her, right? And so she was trying to convince herself the guy who was into her, that she knew was into her, was right for her. So I, I picked it up the minute she said possum. I knew that whatever she was talking about was, I mean, utter pretense. And she was trying to convince herself first, you know, and then believe it. And so um, that helped me a lot, just knowing she saw a, a possum, right? Okay. Um, and in our lives, like we can just watch these omens. Yesterday, I went to get a physical therapy treatment. As I'm walk, driving down the road, there was two deer. And deer symbolize gentleness. And since I do, you know, playing card readings, I look at deers as hearts, the suit of hearts, you know, which is suit of love. And gentleness is an aspect of love, of course. And that's only female deer. That, that's not male deer. I'm talking about the female, the doe. So there was two does there. I had to slow down, let them finish crossing and keep going there. So I thought that's interesting. I got a two of hearts, which is the card of love. And I was like, that's interesting. I'm just going to get a physical therapy treatment, you know, with someone I've known for five years. Yeah. So I get there, we start talking. She goes, yeah, it'd be really great if you would come give a talk at our ashram, I've never, which I've never done. And she said, uh, I'm like, what on? She goes, well, our theme right now is love. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, sure, why not, right? And I've had, I'll tell you, you know, so many major things in my life when I was in a troubled condition, an animal shows up. And like shows me the path, you know, is the omen. And um, like I said, this book will help people get an understanding and grasp of that. You also, um, there's this Brihat Samhita. It's the king book of omens from India. It's two big volumes, right? Um, and it has a lot of also. Varaha Mihira, yeah. No, no, no. Prashna Marga. I don't know if you've heard. Yes, of yes. That. I got Prashna Marga here too. Yeah. Prashna Marga is wonderful as yeah. well. So. Um, Brihat Samhita has got all kinds of crazy omens, from the omens of things in the sky to you look at someone's sword and you see where the nicks are and you predict when they're going to die in the next battle, you know? Wow. And, and pretty they much, talk about the flame of the candle. If the flame is moving more to the right, this is what it happened left. This is what's going to happen if it's still. So yeah, yeah it's everywhere. It, yeah, it has all this crazy stuff. It's very elaborate, though, and it's going to be, it's really sort of overwhelming a lot. Um, and it's very a scientific, elaborate system. Same with Prajna Marga, where literally the direction something's at takes part in detailing the omen. So these books have some very heavy, detailed omens that if someone really wanted to do a focused study, that, that I'd recommend those two books, okay? okay? But for those who just want to get an awareness and really a, a high awareness, um, reading through some of those chapters in those books to get an idea of how omens of work is working is great. Okay. Um, so animals are great. Paying attention to anything that happens right at the moment the question's asked. Right at the moment you're thinking something. Say you're just driving down the road, and all of a sudden you start rehashing something really strongly, and something happens. Pay attention to that. Um, and try to read it logically. So some things to help read it logically. Um, if it's on the left, it tends to do with your emotional receptive side. If it's right. on the right, it tends to do with your active male side. Okay, that's one rule. Especially if you get hurt or get in an accident. Right. Let's say someone crashes into your car or you cut your finger or something. Those are all omens. And um, I've also found that, say you are cooking and you burn your hand. And usually that burn is going to hurt you for three or four days, right? Yep. I found that if you just stop and figure out the omen, what was going through my head, what was I doing when I burnt the hand? Figure out the omen of that. Okay. It's, it's fine a couple hours. The pain goes away. Right. You know, because the, until you get it, the omen's going to nag you and pain you. Okay. 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 Got it. So um, accidents are huge. If someone has an accident, I don't even look at the chart. I'll say, what happened? Where, what direction were you going? East, spiritual, west towards material, you know, um, north is towards the emotional and south is towards like the, the financial material. Find out what direction they were going on. Right. Find the name of the street. You know, sometimes people, you know, you know, they get an accident on Church Street. It's like, okay, this is a religious 
accident because something you're doing with your spiritual life, right? Um, one time I've seen people like an accident next to a cemetery. Okay, something's really coming to an end eventually, you know, something's going to be final here, you know? Yeah. So you can literally read a person's life based on accidents. And with accidents, if they happen in a vehicle, a car, then I always read it in the context of their, um, of their relationship life. Because Venus rules vehicles, right? Right. And ve Venus rules your relationships too. Could it also be why they were driving? Perhaps they were trying to get some job. Yes. to accident. Okay, that yeah. job is not going to happen. Yeah, if they're, if they're going somewhere, yeah. then yes, it's important in respect to that, like have a goal, but they're just kind of doing their casual, normal yeah. stuff. Yeah. But there, it's, it's really an omen comes in respect to what's most strong in your mind and your consciousness. So if you're driving, all you're thinking about is I got to get this job. Yeah, it's about the job. Um, but if you get, if you um, are thinking about, you know, your sister in the hospital as you're driving to get the job and that's what's prominent in your consciousness, that's what the omen's about. Okay. So, you can never read an omen for a person until you really know what was in their mind. That's why when they ask the question, but if, they, if someone has an accident, I'll say, what were you thinking about? What was your prominent thought when this happened? So I have a basis to read the omen from, got it? Okay, okay. Now, what about like if, let's say I'm giving a reading and my kids come and start knocking on the door, daddy, daddy, or they like just open the door and like come quietly when someone knocks on your door while you're trying to give a reading of something, what does that represent? It depends what they're coming for. Let me tell you the perfect, the most awesome one of those. Okay. okay. So I, um, when I used to live in the desert in California, I had this little shack I would go to do my classes and reading so I could be away from the kids and the noise. And one time I was teaching a class and we were actually talking about the, um, election, um, I was doing the election techniques on the Bush Gore election. Okay. okay. This was way back then. Yeah. And my son comes knocking on the door. He knows he's not supposed to. He was probably four or something, maybe three. So this little kid comes painting on the door. And I'm like, and he keeps knocking. I'm like, what? He goes, I wanted to show you my Elmo tattoo. <laughs> okay. And, okay. And he had gotten like a little sticker of a tattoo you, know, you put on with water, right? And I'm like, oh, cool. I'm teaching a class. Move on, you know? Yeah. And when I had an astrologer in the class, her name's Carol Allen, and she knows about omens too. And she said, she said, <laughs> Bush is going to win because everyone knows he's a puppet. Yeah. Okay. You know, Elmo is a puppet, right? Yeah. And so she said, Bush is going to win. He's a total puppet. Well, Bush won that election, right? <laughs> so, you know, so it depends why they're coming. You know, if your kid shows up on this because they got cut, well, okay, something's going to be cut out of the person's life, right? Okay. So it really depends what you the knock is kids about. Come because they're like, Daddy, can you buy this for us, please? Can we please have a princess car? There is always something they want to get. So while yeah. I'm giving a relationship reading or a career reading, they'll come and knock. Or yeah, so if I was doing a relationship reading, the guy was asking about a girl and the kid knocks on says, I want a princess car. Yeah. I'd say, well, this girl's going to have really high expectations. High expectations, you know? okay. That's, I <laughs> yes, I, yes, okay. You I know, she's going to be a princess, right? Yes, yes. Princess. Or if he says, yeah, I don't know how to treat this girl to keep her happy, and she knocks on the door and says, okay. it's a princess, can I have a princess car? I'd say, as long as you treat like a princess, everything will be okay. Okay. <laughs> you know? And then nowadays, you get a lot of spam calls you know, those unknown numbers on your cell phone calling, or let's say just a phone call comes while you're giving a reading. And of course you ignore that, but what does that indicate? How do you study the phone ringing or text message coming? Yeah, it, again, it depends on the context of the message. The message, the omen is just saying, pay attention to this. So if I get an Amber Alert during your reading, which means a child's been abducted, yeah, then, it depends what I'm doing the reading on, but then I would read that Amber Alert in the context of that. So if she says, I'm thinking about having children, yeah, and I get an Amber Alert, I'm like, I don't think you're going to be able to have children with this guy, or maybe at all, or whatever they asked about. Okay. 
You know, it just always depends on the context. It's what if about, it says unknown call and I ignore it during yeah. the reading? I would Does not that read that at all. Then. have any context with that or just? I just wouldn't even bother reading that. Are you any, okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Yeah, it's really funny. Uh, um, one time, gosh, what was it? I had someone who had someone who was having a bit of trouble. Their, their kid was having some trouble. Okay? Yeah. And I was thinking about helping out this kid. And right when that happened, somebody told me, right when I was writing and thinking how I was going to handle that situation, somebody told me, I got an email that I'm pregnant. I said, good, I'll be able to help this kid. <laughs> you know? okay. I knew I, then I knew okay, I'll be able to help this kid because I didn't know if I was able to, you know? And so then I finished the email, sent it on. So sometimes it's so obvious, but if you have to read in the connotation of what you're working on, what, what the reading's about, and what comes in. Just an unknown number, I would maybe at best I'd say, well, there's an unknown variable here. Unknown variable here, okay. You know, because it's unknown, right? There's something here that we're not yeah. gonna be able to figure out that will come, but I wouldn't consider it to be really super important. Okay. Unless you have three or four calls within a few minutes, you know? Within a few minutes, okay, okay. And yeah. then, like yesterday was a very funny thing. I was talking to my friend and I'm like, God, I hope this coronavirus thing doesn't stop me seeing my spiritual teacher this year because I'm going to be seeing him. And I was really worried because I really wanted to just, I've been longing to see him for the past five years. Wow. And finally I would. And, um, I hung up the call. I'm like, okay, I need coffee. So I went downstairs and on the foyer table was a uh, parcel. It wasn't an Amazon parcel, it was a parcel. I'm like, oh, this looks like a book. I'm like, what book did I order? So I go, I open it and lo and behold, it's a book by the person that I'm hoping I really get to see. And I just knew my, that's the omen. He is going to come and I am going to see him. Perfect. Yeah. That was like the most beautiful omen. And that's like, oh yeah, tomorrow I'm doing this video with Ernst. And look what just happened. The most beautiful thing. Perfect. So, yeah. This, I mean, yeah. just like that, I mean, you can see the omen occurring. No. Okay. Now another thing, couple of instances, one, cause I don't have a net on my windows yet. We just moved into this house. So I had my window open and I'm, giving sometimes reading and a bee would come in and I would like stop the reading and I would like try to get something and to get it out. What would a bee or wasp represent? And then okay. I also get birds sometimes coming right here, birds or mosquito. Okay. Bees are going to represent, um, bees simply represent being super busy, being super active, non-stop yeah. activity. Okay, but non-stop activity has a good purpose. Okay, all insects on some level represent a non-stop activity. Okay. Okay, um, and the reason that is because insects, they, they're born, they, they move, 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 and they die in a short time. They don't have time to take a break. Take a break, yeah. They just work until they die pretty much. So zoom, 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 okay. Bees are one of the best activity omens because it's activity that has a, a wonderful purpose because of course they produce honey, right? Yeah. Okay. Now mosquitoes, on the other hand, are super, super busy biting people yeah. to get what they need to take care of what their responsibilities. Because see, they bite people because they need the, the protein for the eggs. They don't bite people if they're not going to lay eggs. Okay. And male mosquitoes don't bite people. Only female mosquitoes do, you know? So, um, and most mosquitoes you see are female because they're the ones cruising around looking for some protein. Um, so a mosquito means a person's being super, super busy and stressed because there's some real things they have to take care of. They don't have a lot of time for it. Okay. Now, if you get bit by mosquitoes, this is a completely different thing. If you get bit by mosquitoes, it's because, and you, like some people just have a habit. They just get bit by mosquitoes. When they get bit, they get a huge irritating rash. It's compared yeah. to another person who's next to them and says, I didn't even get a bite. Yeah. Or a person gets a couple of bites, but they hardly itch. Yeah. So people who attract mosquitoes and who um, get really bad, painful itching from them, their issue is that 
what happens when a mosquito bites you? Like, get away, get away, get away, get away, get away, right? Yeah. So their issue is they just, they have a problem where they can't tolerate people. For some reason, they've been hurt enough that they just want to get away from everybody. And if you get to learn these people, they're the ones who talk about wanting to go live in Alaska, you know, or go live off grid, you know, just be right. away from all those pesky people, you know? Okay. Now, a bee does not, shouldn't signify danger though, because when I see a bee, I'm like panicking. I'm like, I don't want it to bite me or get to me. So does that no, present no. danger in any way? Yeah, I would, I never consider bees as a, a problematical uh, thing. Okay. My kids, they pick bees up with their hands and carry them outside. Wow, okay. <laughs> And then what about like, sometimes I'm like, I have my window open and I'm doing a reading and then suddenly I'll start hearing one bird. Pew, 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 pew. Like those particular birds, they'll, they'll start chattering. What is, what does the bird Yeah, mean? With birds, um, if you see the specific kind of bird, it'll, it'll have a different element as an omen, okay? But you're talking about just hearing some, some, some birds, okay? So what you're hearing is bird song. So the omen is bird song. Okay, so that means what the person is talking about is probably not very relevant. Nope. It's just bird song. Okay. Okay. So um, the way they're explaining it, their story, da da da, is probably not the most relevant thing, um, and that there's a lot more underneath the surface that needs to be dealt with. Okay. But if you get like an eagle, you know, flying by, and you see an eagle, an eagle lands on a tree. Well, that means eagle symbolizes the great spirit, you know, like God, basically. So that means you know that their concern is only going to be able to be solvable on a spiritual level. So if they say, yeah, what am I going to get money? And eagle shows up, you're like, well, your, your prosperity has to do with your spiritual life, with how your, how your spiritual attitude about yourself. And something on the spiritual level needs to be worked out before you can have prosperity or whatever the question might be. Okay. And uh -huh. sometimes uh -huh. I'll see like a red cardinal or the blue cardinal come in. Do they have a specific? Okay. Um, like a blue cardinal, I mean like a blue jay? Yeah, blue jay or the red cardinal. Yeah. yeah. Let me remember. We don't have those here. So it's been so long since I've seen one. Let me look it up. Um, cardinal. I think I have cardinal in this book. There might be something specific to that. Okay. But if not, um, okay, there's nothing specific to cardinal, but if we take the, the bird by its name, it's cardinal, right? So that means it has high rank, you know? And it's a red bird because it's obvious. Yeah. So cardinal represents something of high rank or great importance that's very, very obvious, very, very visible, okay? And, off, and something of authority. So there's an obvious authority that can answer the question. Okay. Um, and of course, cardinals, they call it a cardinal because of the red robes that cardinals used to wear in the church in some areas. Okay. You know, it's, it's a, it's, it's it has that. Oh, well, like they say the cardinal sin. So, okay. Yeah. And so it's a primary cardinal means like in Western astrology, Aries, Cancer are called cardinal signs. Right. They're the beginning, the primary. So, there's something primary, a primary person, or this is what they're really here for. You know, so say they come in. Um, so it's a big importance when you see a cardinal. It's like a flag that says, this is what you got to pay attention to. So let's say a person comes in and you're reading their chart and they say they're talking about their money. And, and you, all of a sudden you look at the seventh house and you're trying to open your mouth up about the seventh house. And you see a cardinal. That means, okay, the bird's telling you, yeah, you really have to look at their seventh house today. That's the primary cardinal reason they're here. You have to be their authority on their seventh house, okay. regardless if they, they said they came here for money. Okay. Okay. Or if you're doing a reading and, and you're just reading the chart and it's all about money and then they ask a question about a different topic and right then the cardinal comes on, that's saying this is the important thing. So whatever... Okay. It's highlight at that moment. That's the thing to focus on. That's the real thing they need okay. to know. Now, here's a particular one that it pretty much applies to me, I think, only. So, like, sometimes when I'm doing a reading, I'm smoking a cigar. And sometimes the ash of the cigar will fall on my, 
Now it's not really hot, but it's warm. It stings a little bit. And I would yeah. have to like pick it up and put it in my ashtray. And I always wonder, like I'm giving this particular reading and I'm like smoking a cigar, but then suddenly it just fell on my hand or here and just had that sting burn. What does that signify? Oh, I would read that the thing they want to do or talking about doing is something that's not good for them. It's going to hurt them. Ah, okay. Real simple, right? Because you're doing something that's not really good for you, right? Yeah. But it's not hurting you until that moment you get a little ash and it burns you. It hurts at that moment, right? Right. So there's something that they are want to do or thinking about doing that's not good for them and it's going to hurt them. That's not good for them. Okay. okay. Real simple. At Almonds, it's all about logic. All Just logic sheer logic okay okay um is there anything i'm, I'm just like thinking of um uh, what other things that we i mean what other things you think we can just in the office environment that i'm in what um have you noticed like well your one thing you can do that's a lot of fun this is really great okay another thing i want to talk about one of my favorite omens are playing cards okay because Playing card symbols exist all around us. Maybe not as direct cards, but at different things. Like for instance, the suit of clubs are leaves. So if, you know, I'm talking to someone and, you know, walking down the street, talking to someone, and all of a sudden I see three beautiful leaves on the ground on the street. When, I, when we're talking about something, I know the answer is the three of clubs or the three of leaves because the club suit is actually leaves. Okay. And so I can interpret based on that card. Uh, here's a great story, okay? In the birth card system, everyone has a, a card. So I was doing a project with someone who was a nine of diamonds. So the day they were born was a nine of diamonds day. So we typify them and call them, you're a nine of diamonds person. And while I was beginning to deal with this project, I went and rode a bicycle that I just got and I was testing out. And as I came into my driveway, which is gravel, I actually slipped on the gravel and fell, which never happened in years, you know? And I was like, wow. And on the front of the bike, the logo of that brand of bike was nine diamonds in a diamond shape. Oh, so I was like, okay, this project is not going through. And, as it, and after that point, it just started deteriorating like this and never manifested. But so, it was on a bike. It, the, the symbol of the nine diamonds was the, was the logo on the bicycle. But doesn't the bike represent the forward movement? Of yeah, and I, I'm in the forward motion. I got into a rough spot into some gravel, which I ride oh, through okay. every oh, day, you fell, okay. and I yeah. fell over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I fell over. Yeah. Now, I got the bike at the time that I started associating with that person. When I saw the nine of diamonds on the front of the bike, I said, wow, this, this is promising because I just got the yeah. bike. And it seemed yeah, really promising, really. but then the day I fell, okay. it was like, okay. And it was really good. It was really worthwhile until that point. After okay. I crashed the bike. So when you're talking about the cards, do you just lay the cards out and just pick one card? While okay. You're reading? Well, what you can do is, if you learn the cards. Look, I got a knock on my door. It's my daughter. Okay. I w let me see what she asks. <laughs> Oh, she's opened the window. Okay, daddy's working. I'll be back. Okay. So she just said, "My elder daughter just opened up the window." Come <laughs> look at it. <laughs> so that means like you're opening some new window into looking into something new. Okay. Yeah. So this, this is, is how what I have to deal with <laughs> all the omens. Okay. So. If, if you learn to read the cards as symbols of nature, which is what they really are, you're surrounded by these symbols. And I've, I've, I have students all the time, they tell me they're dealing with something and they're walking down the street and there's a playing card on the ground. You know, they just, people, kid drops a playing card somewhere and they step on it and they read their life in the context of that playing card. So I really like learning playing card omens because um, you can apply them all around you with a little imagination, like spades. All right, that's shovels, it's trees in nature, it's knives, and so on. So if somebody um, knocks on the door and says, oh, you know, where's the big knife? You know, the one for chopping whatever, you know, or, you know, it's a spade situation, right. you know? 
And so learning the cards opens up a world of symbology that's huge. And also what you can do while you're doing a reading, you can just sit there and shuffle them. Just play with them, shuffle them, okay. wait till one falls out of the deck. Okay. Eventually you're going to drop one. And if not, just all of a sudden, when they, every time they ask me a question, just pull the card. Okay. Oh, I got that. And you just keep playing with the cards as you're talking to them. They ask another question, or I'm going to ask it, pull the next card. Read that card. And you can sit there and do a reading with one card per question all day long. Or if you're just hanging out, like at a meeting or something, and, um, and you say hey, people want to work on a project, got 10 people there, you can sit there, play with your cards. When somebody says, I have a point, uh, that point's never going through. <laughs> you know, you can just pull a card and, and read everything it says. You know, so I, how I do we to learn like, what, like, what is Ace of Diamonds represents? Yeah. The, the best place to go, I, I recommend people to, is my cardsoftruth.com site. Okay. Where I have videos on learning the whole system of cards and also the birth card system. Okay. And they're but just using normal cards? Just normal playing cards, yeah. Okay. And ever since I started um, using playing cards more, the world of omens has opened up so much more. Okay. Because, you know, if we use a little imagination and we understand what the suits are like, hearts are actually fruit. Okay. You know, they're actually little strawberries, little apples. Right. Right. So if the kid knocks on the door and says, can I have an apple? Yeah. Right when, you know, um, you know, someone asks you about love, the answer is yes. There's an emotional connection here. Emotional connection. Okay. okay. But on the other hand, your kids bang on the door and says, he won't share the apple. And they're fighting yeah. over an apple. Well, you know, these people are going to emotionally not get along yeah. if they get together. You know? Okay. And then the, the one last thing that I wanted to ask you is this. What is your opinion on this? Oh, pendulums, yeah. Pendulums. Mm -hmm. Pendulums are great tools, but they do take a lot of practice to use. Okay. Um, in the old days, there was an art, and there, not an art, there was an absolute science to using pendulums. Okay. And so if you wanted to say, look for a mineral underground, like silver or gold or something, depending on how the pendulum would move, right. would depend on what the mineral was. If it goes this many times, it's silver. It's this many times, it's gold. And these old scientists, these old occult scientists, had the frequencies of different materials. Or they would have pendulums that would open up and you put a little silver in it if you're looking for silver. So they, they, they really had this whole scientific attitude about it. Now it's not like that. Now it's like, take your pendulum and yes or no or whatever, ask the question. So now they don't try to pretend like there's some scientific link to it all and this or that. Um, but people who know how to use them, uh, the famous classic was written by a priest actually. And one time he was walking down a trail and there was a sick guy dying, you know, and he goes, what happened? He goes, I ate something I shouldn't have. And I think I poisoned myself. So he got his pendulum out. Is something is there something to cure him in close enough to cure him? Yes. What direction? He finds a direction. How many steps? This many steps. He goes that many steps, takes a leaf off the plant. He doesn't know what the leaf is, right? Yeah. Feeds it to him and it happens to be the antidote and the guy lives. Wow. Okay. So, so you know, how accurate are they? Have you experienced them and how it, accurate are it they? It really depends on the person. How it, so? it, it depends on the skill of the person. Pendulums have no magic themselves. It's all about the person's ability to unconsciously connect to the universal mind, basically. So somebody who has awareness of higher realms, or at least believe in not, yeah, it can it, be a skeptic even, saying, okay, I'm going to try this and see, I'm going to prove it wrong. Yes. So pendulum will not work with them because it's, they just have a very low... They it's probably won't, conscious. unless they just are more connected than they think so. See, doubtful people sometimes are more connected to... Okay. See, you know, we're all in this energy field, right? Yeah. And this energy field pervades everything. So I'm breathing air, which is part of this energy field. I'm embodied, I'm part of this energy field. There's right. a plant over there that's part of the energy field. It's all interconnected. So we're intimately connected to everything in the world, in the universe. When we do a pendulum, it's our connection with that, and it's a, that, the ability of that to come through us correctly that determines our skill with the pendulum. Because if I'm asking a question with it, is there a plant over here that can save this guy? Right. The universal intelligence knows what this guy 
right, chemically how this guy is dying. The universal intelligence knows the chemical laws that will antidote that. The universal intelligence knows there's a plant over here yeah. that has the chemicals that will antidote that. Okay. But can the pendulum guy tune into that? If he can, the pendulum will work right. Because what happens is you move the pendulum yourself. You're moving it unconsciously. Yeah. yeah. It's just, are you accessing the universal mind? A lot of people, when they do pendulum, especially when they do it for themselves, they're not really accessing universal mind. Mm -hmm. They're accessing their um, subconsciousness. And then you'll get answers out of your subconsciousness, which sometimes are correct, but sometimes aren't. It depends the origin. See, a lot of the stuff in our subconscious are things we want that are not right for us. And when we ask about those things, because our subconscious wants them, we might get a yes and it never happens. Right. So, uh, yeah, that's a big thing. So what's the way we can improve to get more accurate results? The, the main thing is really spiritual development. It's the spiritual whole secret to being good on that. Like this one guy who is the best all time, you know, who wrote this. I don't remember his name. Um, I have the book over there. Um, he was a priest. So obviously he's devoted his life to spirituality. And a lot of Catholics did this. This was a very prominent thing, a very common thing done in the Catholic, by Catholic priests in the um, 18, 1900s, believe it or not. Okay. And does this um, particular thing should be used on ourselves or only other people? The no. pendulum? <laughs> it should not be used on oneself. Yeah, you know, that's, we'll read that omen. It can be used on anyone, but only someone who have a friendly <laughs> intent for us. Okay. Because what does this mean? You, We're talking yeah, about that's the why I'm bringing the dog into it. Yeah. So the dog's barking was saying only if you're friends with the person oh. or have a friendly attitude. Because if you have anything in yourself that doesn't like that person, that doesn't want to just be a friend to that person, yeah, then your subconscious mind is going to screw it up. Got it? Okay. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So, but yeah, they work. It depends on the practitioner. I've seen people who are good at it. Yeah. And my son's actually likes it and, and is decent at it. He, whenever he loses something, he tries to pen it. He just goes up and pen. I can't look at Joshua, right? Hey! Sit down. Yeah. So I'll pass to Prajna and he'll get out his pendulum, right? We'll see who can find the item fastest, you know? Okay. Okay. Cool. But it just takes it takes practice and it, you have to be clear and you can't have any desire. You no. can't have, if you have any agenda, it won't work. Any agenda will work. Okay. Got it. You have to be pure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Ernst, for giving your valuable time on this omens. And like you said, if they want to learn the cards, they can go to the, what was the website again? Um, cardsoftruth.com. Cardsoftruth.com. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Great. Bye -bye. See you again. Take care.